labor of love and joy and angst. It has come to those participating through great pain, great joy, to be who you really are, no matter what others say, to understand your love is as valid as all other love, to know that God loves your love. For many of us, the door to being in spiritual connection to God was closed. Closed by others' opinion, closed by church policy, closed by law, closed by mind, closed by our own self-hatred. The miracle is that somehow those doors were opened, have been opened, and are still being opened. Join us then as we look at opening the doors. Big boys don't cry. Sit like a lady. You can't wear that. Your hair is too short. Your hair is too long. Freak, fag, dyke. Girls should let the boys win. Boys can't touch their friends too long. The red door stops us from being our true selves. The red door can symbolize all the hatred and anger that's thrown at us. From the time I was 11, I knew I was not like other girls. I was a girl who was attracted to other girls, not to boys. There was nothing to support my understanding of myself. No TV shows, no pop stars, no books, no vocabulary, no other people like me. For 16 years, I lived in a state of confusion and self-denial and anxiety. And it was aggravated as my sister was fired from her job as a camp counselor because somebody said she had been kissing another one. Eventually, I had a nervous breakdown and was hospitalized. I didn't come out to myself until I was in my late 20s, and when I did, things did start to get better. My life has not always been easy as a lesbian, but it has been much, much better than being in a state of fear and isolation not knowing how to be fully the person God made me to be. I'm Leslie Lauderdale. I'm an ally. I lived and worked and danced in San Francisco when AIDS was scary and unreal and devastating. In those days, I worked with people who did not share a desk with a co-worker who had AIDS. I honor the memory of Don. In those days, some people were afraid to touch a person with AIDS. I honor the memory of Ryan White, the Indiana hemophiliac, brave enough to share his story. In those days, some birth families would refuse to visit a dying child. I honor the memory of Capel Thwaite Moran, a friend and artist. AIDS is an ugly disease. Hate crimes are ugly. Being put on the street for your sexuality is ugly. Oh, the people who were cherished and lost. You cry and you mourn, and you wake up each day ready to carry on, ready to love, ready to dance. Red doors are common on churches. They represent the martyrs. So today, we pause to think about all those who gave their lives. Matthew Shepard, Harvey Milk, the many, many, many young men who died needlessly of AIDS as our government stood by and did nothing. Those labeled with pink triangles in the Holocaust, and those who continue to be persecuted. The orange door is a door of caution. To always have to watch your back, your pronouns, how close you are, if your hands might touch, if your eyes might meet. Where can you be your true gender? Where must you continue the shroud? Careful not to hurt someone else's sensibilities, while all the while you are pushing your feelings deeper and deeper aside. I'd like to read a poem I wrote in the tender 
young age of uh, 24. Um, actually, it's a song that never found its tune. We must always hide our love at home, leaving it locked away when we go into public places. I must keep my eyes from meeting yours, except for fleeting glances, kissing in the dark, hiding in the shadows, wishing for the day we might be kissing in the light. We must be careful about our love. Never tell our secret to anyone on the outside. They'd gladly tear our hearts in two and strip away our pride. We're kissing in the dark, hiding in the shadows, wishing for that day we might be kissing in the light. I'd love to hold your hand in mine, run up the hill and shout, our love is true and pure and right. Someday, I pray I might. Till then, we're kissing in the dark. The orange door also represents the first cautious movements. Oscar Wilde's U.S. tour, the daughters of the Lydas, Ask in Canada, Barbara Giddings and others, Illinois becoming the first state to decriminalize homosexuality in 1962, Stonewall, the AIDS Quilt, ACT UP, ACLU, the Human Rights Campaign, and many, many protests. My name is Jenny. The orange door of caution turns into the yellow door, representing a glimmer of hope. But it is not all sunshine and rainbows. Each glimmer of hope, each ray of sun, was bought with struggle. Yet God has been with us, providing the strong voice we need. I remembered that the door I came out of was terrifying. Until I said those words, I was still normal. Until I said those words, I was the daughter, the niece, the sister they always wanted. Until I said those words, they believed I could do anything. When I said those words, I lost a kind of privilege, and I literally felt it fall off of me. But when I said those words, I gained a new voice. A voice that authentically owned and owns my experiences and expresses my own heart. A perspective that I recognize began to hear and recognize and understand other people around me who were also starting to speak their truth. Until you speak your own truth, you cannot fully hold the truth of another. Recognizing that, and that voice has made all the difference in how I've lived my life. We at Pilgrim offer all of us and everyone a chance and an invitation to find our own truth. The yellow door of hope brings us closer to truth, to fullness, to being in right relationship with our Creator. So we celebrate those coming out mo moments, both big and small. The American Psychiatric Association removing sexual orientation as an illness in 1973. The first March in Washington, Women's March in Washington in 1979, the Michigan Women's Fest, Fire Island, Ellen's hand on the microphone declaring I'm gay, RuPaul bringing gender expansiveness into our living rooms. All of those glimmers of hope. I'm Maureen. Our green door represents our theology of liberation. To know that all are welcome is not enough. You cannot put out the welcome mat and not provide the true welcome. Remember WWJD, what would Jesus do? We can laugh and cringe as well, but we as pilgrims know what Jesus would do. 20 years ago, some brave pilgrims began painting our church in an extravagant welcome. Among them were Sally Olson, Carla Grosh, Janet McClain, Cheryl Capps, and our dear, never one to shy away from sharing her opinion, Phyllis Bowen. They began the process to make pilgrim open and affirming, truly fulfilling the passage from Romans 15:2. Accept one another, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Green, bold, bright, healing, 
to make sound or whole. Green, bold, bright, healing, restoring, ending conflict. Green, bold, bright, and healing, relief with time. Green, bold, bright, healing. Not medicine, but the words and actions of understanding. So the green door represents the times we offer extravagant welcome to all, that we respond to the Pulse Massacre by becoming active and visible again, that we allow our children here at Pilgrim to ask questions and to wear interesting outfits to church, that we make no assumptions about gender or what toys children should play with. I'm Brenda Barnes Jameson. The blue door represents extravagant welcome surrounding love and gender that we hope will be in our future. Why do we need this welcome? Well, here's a story. Nearly every day of her first year teaching preschool, our daughter was in a conflict with a five-year-old boy in her classroom. She developed an excellent rapport with a child mother, and the two of them problem solved nearly daily to resolve whatever behavior challenges would arise. One day, she just plain got tired of of enforcing the rule that said children were not allowed to wear dress-up clothes into other centers, like the art center where there was paint being used, where the clothes would get accidentally painted. Instead, she went to the dress-up center and she dressed up herself, and then she went to the gross motor center and put on classical music. And she invited this little boy to a royal ball. And soon, they were dancing, and they were extending invitations to all the other classmates. Eventually, my daughter had to take her off her own finery so there would be enough clothes for all of the children to dress appropriately. And they danced, and they danced at this royal ball for two hours. She snapped a picture of the class, and she asked me to try to identify the little boy who had started this all. It turned out that he was the one wearing the pink silk top and the beautiful skirt and a floppy hat and high heels. From his very early age, he had been bending gender expectations. His mother and teachers supported him, but his father did not. The more his father pushed him at home, the angrier and more disruptive this little boy was at school. And I start to wonder, how often do we ask kids to conform to expectations that do not fit for them? What is the cost to the kid, but also to their parents and teachers and classmates and our whole culture? What might happen if we simply trusted that God would help them figure out who they are? and how they need to respond to life. I'm Leslie. I'm Lydia. Um, the Blue Door, the, the future. Uh, when we stumbled on the Pilgrim, we were looking for a preschool that would accept differences, differences of all kinds. We had uh, someone had already been kicked out of the you know, conventional preschool, <laughs> and we found it. Then we explored the church and found a place we could call home, a place where I could teach and Lydia could learn, and where there were lots of other people who were different, and that was more than okay. Little did we know that as Lydia was discovering her sexuality and I was learning how to be a parent, that we had found the perfect home, a place where all were welcome, no matter what. Byron and I could not have known that Lydia was gay when we joined. But God led us to this place of fellowship. And now Lydia would like to support others who are trying to figure out their sexuality. And I would like to support other parents who are looking for a community that celebrates the differences that God has made. And so it goes. One of us touching one and passing it on so that all may know that they are a child of God, wonderfully made. And I am so blessed to be part of a community that has let me accept myself and be myself without a memory. Canopies, but no rain reaches under the eaves. 
and so much of the spring into summer, I need to water the soil. So if you were to pass by, you may wonder why this crazy woman is spending so much time and resource watering soil. It looks as though I am foolish and wasting perfectly good water. And the purple door is like this. It is the core of our faith. It is our hope for the future. It is the million tiny and not so tiny things that we do as a church and a congregation and as individuals that will one day change this world. We water plants before we can see them. We teach children tolerance before they will need the skill. We plan and prepare the dinner before it is time to eat, sometimes not knowing who will be there at our table. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would be able to legally marry. Never did I think I would walk into a reception hall and arrange to have a reception. Never did I think there would be sign in the lobby with my and my new wife's name on it and I would not be worried about losing my job. All of that because of soil that was watered long ago and by many. But not all the soil is being watered. My lilies are now on their way. You can see their tiny little green shoots poking up their heads. In some places, these shoots need more encouragement to continue to grow, to know that God loves them. And they need to grow and continue to grow into the beautiful lilies that they can be. In other places, there's still nothing but soil. And we need to provide the water. And in other places, since the shoots are struggling, but they are being stomped down as soon as they come up. Open and affirming is not a one-time thing. It's not an LGBTQ thing. It is not going to demand by God. The fact that we love and accept one another is just the first step. The real need is for every person to realize how deeply they are loved by God. To realize that they are God's unique, precious, wonderful creation so that they can share their gifts with the world. I'm Sue Sporty. I'm reading these words from Mary Legere, who was unable to be with us today. I love you. You are safe with me. What can I do today to make you happy? I really care for you. I will stop punishing you. I will treat you kindly. I will listen to you and be considerate of you and your names and pronouns. I will nurture you. It is time now to be healed. I am loved. I am love. I am the beloved. The doors are opened. Amen.